Hello, my name is Ray, and I have a game. It's called Soul Reaver 2. And oh my gosh, have I got a lot of nostalgia for this game. And there is a lot to say about it, too. See, this game came out when I was a teenage kid. I'd always been late in the console stuff, so I went from a Super Nintendo straight to a PS2. I got the PS2 for Christmas, but I didn't get any games because my parents didn't know what to buy me. So, was as my fashion at the time, I put on a jacket and I walked for several hours down to the marketplace without telling anyone where I was going or what I planned to do. I walked into the game store and I found a game with a picture of this cool blue guy on the front. He was like the world's edgiest smurf. Tired and weary from the cold, I selected this game. This was a time, you see, when you could just go pick up a random game and sometimes it would be pretty good. I took this game to the front, and this was my first run-in with the vile and hated ESRB. The man behind the counter told me I was too young and impressionable for this game, and that I might be encouraged to touch butts or something. They believed that I'd be better off bored and maybe more likely to experiment with drugs, I guess. So he refused the sale and I left this store. I walked down to the alley past the local cocaine dealer, and then brushed past him to go to the other game store down the street. They told me the same thing. So I walked past the cocaine dealer again, down to the other other store, even further down the street. On the other side, though, so you have to pass the cocaine dealer both ways. They also told me I was too young. And now you think I might be out of options, but there was one more choice, and I had avoided it. The local Best Buy. Being after Christmas, it was crowded and smelled like sweat. Children were screaming, mothers were trying desperately to reason with their nine-year-old kids. But through the haze of cortisol and suffering, I finally managed to get to the cashier. He rang the game up and sent me on my way. It was stressful that day. Once I got the game home, it was pretty cool. It was heavily story-based and featured some really good voice acting, including an actor I basically grew up with, Tony J. Tony J played Megabyte from Reboot, Dr. Lipschitz from Rugrats, Rex Smythe Higgins from Hey Arnold, Chairface Chippendale from The Tick, Shere Khan from The Jungle Book. I mean, the guy played some of my favorite characters as a kid. And in this game, he played the Elder God, a gigantic squid. It's cooler than it sounds, really, and the part stuck with me. Anyway, there's actually a lot of stuff that I can talk about, and a lot of details that I can go into. But for now, I'm just gonna run through a crash course on the story of the game. So, there are these pillars, right? And they're just like great big old pillars. They go all the way up into the sky, no one knows where they go up to, but they're really important. Or well, everyone thinks they're really important, they say that they're probably good. Uh, uh, well, the people that benefit from the pillars say that they're good, and, you know, no one talks to the commoners. So, anyway, the pillars have these guardians, right? These are people that are born to serve the pillars, or really, they just get magic powers from the pillars. They don't serve the pillars very well. Because, you know, the pillars are just pillars. They're, they're like a structure. They don't really have any willpower. But turns out maybe this is kind of a problem, because the guardian of the mind falls in love with the guardian of balance. And this is cool for a little while, because, you know, when they go away in the pillar broom closet, everyone just leaves them alone. But then one day, Ariel, the guardian of the mind, she dies. And she's replaced by a little boy, you know, who's born... And not Raptor, the Guardian of the Mind, he's not really into that, so he goes crazy. And the big problem that they have then is when the Guardian of the Mind goes crazy, the dynamic with the pillars gets a little messed up, and everyone else goes crazy too, and pretty soon all the pillars are corrupt and everyone who serves the pillars is corrupt. Meanwhile, nobody really realizes this, but the new Balance Guardian is this guy named Kane. He's kind of a spoiled little rich kid, and he gets killed. Then he gets revived as a vampire, and then he goes off as the vampiric Balance Guardian to kill all the other Guardians. Now, Kane doesn't have a whole lot of finesse about the whole thing, and, and just... There's a lot of time travel, and long, long story short, Kane does eventually successfully kill everybody. Then Kane is informed that he also has to kill himself, because he is still corrupt. Kane says no. That's the first game. The second game is set far in the future, when Kane is ruling over a terrible, terrible vampire empire. He's forcefully recruited a bunch of vampire lieutenants, and then one of them grows wings. Kane gets jealous, and then he takes this guy, whose name is Raziel, and he throws his ever-loving butt into the pit of despair, which is like a giant hell chasm that opened up in Kane's backyard, probably because of something Kane did. Raziel survives in the pit of despair for a very long time. Eventually, he finally wakes up as a spirit. Well, kinda. We'll get into theories on Raziel later, but for now, the most important thing to understand is that Raziel is mad, he can eat souls, and he is a lovely shade of sapphire! Raziel goes on a total rampage, killing off a bunch of his old co-workers and killing his brothers, who are the lieutenants who survived after him. He doesn't do the best job of being really thorough, though. Like Kane, he's a bit sloppy, and one brother lives thanks to Raziel getting sidetracked by chasing Kane. And that's where we're at with Soul Reaver 2. Okay, let's do this! No more exposition! Hello everyone, I'm Taylor, and the screaming one is Peyton. Start the game, bring the vampires! Yes! Alright, we've got one more thing before we start, and it's legal stuff. <laughs> what do you mean, legal stuff? Well, the whole thing that makes a Let's Play legal is that it's transformative. 
In theory, you play a game to play the game, not to watch the game. But the thing is, Legacy of Kain is so story-based that people actually buy the games for the story. And I don't just mean as a secondary motivating force. I mean that getting the story might be the sole factor for buying the game. It's stuff like this why every case of fair use is considered unique. But it is an older game! People are purchasing now! Guys! Right. How are we gonna do a Let's Play of a story-based game if you don't want to show people the story? I don't know, Taylor. We'd have to think of some other way to be transformative. Like if we were maybe wacky parody artists or something. Oh wait, I've got an idea! Kane, I've come for you, and I swear to god, if you drop down from the ceiling and stab me through the head, I'm gonna come back to life, but more angry! Foolish Raziel! You think that Kane would stoop to such a puerile Kane, I, I can't... I can't hear you through the wall. Kane has lived through more wars than men have lied. Kane, you are monologuing through a wall. Use your vampire hearing. Yes. There's a lot of echo, Kane, and I don't have vampire hearing just to strain it listening what to you. What if Kane had said the noteworthy thing? Kane, I don't care what you have to say. Well, that is too bad. Yes, because Kane planned many things to say. Well, I plan to slap you. Raziel, did you have to kill Zaphon? Yes, he threw me in the abyss, him and my other stupid younger brothers. But Zaphon had become a giant spider stuck to the wall. Did it not occur to you, yes, that Zaphon was punished just by virtue of being Zaphon? He was laying eggs, it's for the best. But it was gross, yes. But at least he liked the good eggs, unlike bad egg brother killing son Raziel. Oh yeah, about that, I found out you're not my real dad. What? Raziel, no, yes. No, it's true. I'm pretty sure I'm a seraphim priest. I found my tomb. So what? You were a seraphim before you died. What, you're going to go be a seraphim now? Maybe. Well, they don't take vampires! And that's all your fault! <laughs> you could throw a stone and hit something Kain is guilty for. Let's try. You tell me what you hit and I will tell you how I broke it. <laughs> if anything is broken, it is because I threw you. Yes. Oh well, Raziel. You did not want to be a seraphim. They wore big stupid helmets anyway. Kane, you know, you can do sour grapes on the seraphims all you want, but they killed vampires. And three guesses on what I'm gonna do. <laughs> you bitch slapped Kane! Yeah, and I was gonna do it three times, but you fell backwards. So mighty seraphim Raziel slaps Kane in the face. Keep it up, Kane, I'll do it again. Oh no, yes, don't, please, get off, Raziel. <laughs> Kane is god of Nosgoth, Raziel, yes. And now is time to follow in his footsteps. You will tread after Kane, and we will find your vengeance. Kane does, after all, enjoy this negative attention. Do not stray from your path, Raziel. Frickin' Kane with his always frickin' always gets the last word in! Sucker punch me with the telekinetic explosion! Gonna punch you in the head, Kane, that's what. Hello, weary time traveler. Welcome to this period. Please let us know if we can treat you to any of the amenities. Hey, what the heck? What happened to my arm sword? Ooh, man, I had no way of knowing that was gonna happen to the Reaver. Bring back the arm sword or I will kill you! Oh, don't, don't hit me, Raziel. Seriously, I... I just have no control over this staff. It disables everything, it's crazy. I didn't know. Who are you? Mobius. Mobius. Mobius the Time Guardian? Come on. I heard you were an asshole. You know, usually when people come through the portal, they ask, where am I? And the more appropriate question is, when am I? And then I rebuff by asking, what are you doing donking around in the time stream if you don't know how it works? Are you insulting my intelligence? Okay, actually, I don't really ask those questions, because as the Time Guardian, I know why people are here. And you are here to kill Kane. I hate that guy. Everybody hates Kane. I know, and by that virtue alone, you'd have a lot of friends if you weren't a blue vampire skeleton. It sucks. It's gonna suck worse when you realize that you're in the Seraphin stronghold. Oh, the Seraphins? I used to be one. Oh, I mean... I used to be a seraphim. I know. You practically ran the place. We've got a statue of you and everything. Really? I mean, yeah, that makes sense. That's why I was Kane's lieutenant. Come in here, bud. I'll help you find Kane. We're not friends, Mobius. All right. But I wish you could have seen the seraphim at its peak. There's not a whole lot of us in this era. Oh, yeah? What'd you do wrong? Killed off most of the vampires, basically. Could be worse ways to fall out of favor, I guess. Yep. Come over here. I know it's cliche, but I got a magic wash basin. Aw, are you the fairest one of all? Hush. 
Anyway, you can see down here that Kane is waiting at the pillars. Oh yeah, he turned those into his throne after they broke. What an arrogant prick. We're supposed to be preserving those things. I'll be glad when you kill him. You sure you're mad about the pillars and not that he kills you? Yes. I mean, yes. He kills all of Nosgoth. I'm professional. It's fine. I needed to be killed. Okay, but can I ask you something? What? If you're the Guardian of Time, and you're connected to all points in time, and you got corrupted at one point in time... I appreciate what you are insinuating, and your desire to help Nosgoth by rooting out corruption. But for right now, you should focus on what you were preordained to do. I'm an immortal, Mobius, so I'll get around to it when I'm ready. But if you want to help Nosgoth right now, I could kill you. Will you enjoy your eternal life after you become the Messiah? So this is what we plan to do? Yes, we're going to reconstruct everything? Yep, every cutscene. This game has got a lot of cutscenes to reconstruct. Yep, just about every time Raziel goes somewhere, he stops to talk about it. It's gonna take a lot of work. Personally, I think it'll help with the flow of the game. The thing about Soul Reaver is, it's got a really great appeal for a very niche audience. There's a lot of purple pros, the characters are very verbose, and they're also intentionally unlikable. I love the game to death, but I recognize it's not for everyone. So hopefully what we can do is kind of compress those scenes down a little bit, make fun of them along the way, and still not lose too much information. It's not the same, of course, but that's what makes it transformative. This is going to be fun! I like Kyle. That is a vampire with sense. Aren't we going to confuse people, though? If we talk in our normal voices and do cutscenes, it's going to throw people off. No, the game goes into cinematic mode for cutscenes, so we'll be able to tell. So this is Combat for the game? Does it improve over time? Do we get new moves? Yes. The short but sad answer is no. The difficulty of combat does go up, but the mechanics stay about the same. <laughs> it's a puzzle game. Kind of. The legacy of Kane is really ambitious. Supposedly a more complex battle system was planned, but it had to be dropped due to time constraints. This is true for a lot of stuff in this game. I heard the game did get complaints about poor replayability. It's a problem it had, but I actually replayed it a lot just to look for clues. The game relies on you retreading your steps a lot, but you can interact with the environments differently as you progress through the game. I don't know if that's good or bad, because you don't see that a lot in games today. But because they cut some content, it looks like there are things that should be there when they really aren't. So you can see the scene. Yes! Jab the man with the sword! Aw, you let him live! Duh, Peyton, he's my Seraphim brother, and also I probably jabbed his eye out. And Taylor, no, actually you can't see the seams. That's what makes it deceptive, is you think that there's something more there, and given the game's theme, it kind of works weirdly. As I passed through the stronghold, I had to question what exactly the Seraphim were trying to do. The saintly imagery was attractive, but not really very functional. It led me to think that maybe I was the first dangerous force in the Citadel in a long time. Who decorates their inner sanctum with the heads of their enemies? Yes. People who really like diseases, I guess. Really, Peyton? I would've thought you'd be all over that kind of thing. I would decorate with the heads of my friends. Yes. Why? You dare to question me! Well, yeah. What message would that send? Don't be friends with Peyton? No. It is so I can remember you once you are beheaded. Aww. Right, if you encourage it, that's like consenting. Well, but this is like really adorable sentimentalism coming from Peyton. Yes, Peyton is adorable. Now give Peyton your head in combat! See? See? This game is rated M for Mature for a reason. It's putting ideas in Peyton's head. I have always been thinking about this. Yes. Yeah, this stuff has been in Peyton's head for about as long as I've known her. That is why I have the pills! But they don't fix everything. You know, I bet if this game were released today, it would be rated T for teen. I mean, just watch these blood effects. Look at that. That's like little cartoon spurty things. It is the blood spritzer! Well, those were cutting edge back in the day. Boy, let me tell you, back when we were kids, you got blood spritzer for gore and we didn't complain. We was shocked all the same. And we pretended to be shocked anyway, just to make the censorship people feel like they weren't wasting their time. Man, you guys remember hot coffee, right? I mean, most people our age remember hot coffee. You mean that, uh, that butt-touching mod for San Andreas? Yeah, the butt-touching mod. Well, one day we're going to have great-grandkids that look back at this generation of games, and they are not going to believe that we found it scandalous for these characters to be horrendously clipping through one another in an act of physical bonding. Yes. Oh, hey. Sorry, guys. I know it's kind of short because of the long preamble, <sighs> but we got to stop here because there's some cutscenes coming up and we're running out of time. I feel like we've really gotten the swing of it. I know. We'll try to balance some more commentary in there next time. Maybe just think of this as like a pilot, because we haven't done something like this before. All right. Okay. Thanks for playing with this, everybody.